on today's show. After an embarrassing home defeat, is it time for a coaching change in Denver? Can Lance Stevenson and the Charlotte Hornets get it together? And the Knicks, Iman Shumpert, joins the starters meme team. It's Thursday, November 13th. The starters starts now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to the starters. Some of you joining us live online, some of you listening to the podcast, some of you watching on NBA TV, all of you awesome. I'm Jay Skeets. Alongside me, as always, also awesome, Tess Mellis. Thanks for joining us, folks. To my right, the starters blog editor, Trey Kirby. hey yo. Hey-o. 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 And finally, a man who was down at the Fortress last night and bought himself a Kyle Corver t-shirt, <laughs> Lee Ellis. Girls. Mm, yeah, there's the threes from <laughs> Lee Lee. All right. Have a fun show lined up for you tonight. We're going to uh, get to a new NBA game later in the show, as well as the meme team. But first, I want to show everyone the Western Conference standings right now. We're about two weeks and change into the season. One-tenth almost, guys, through the regular season. First the, ten. the Grizzlies, Rockets, Warriors at the top. Blazers there in the fourth spot. Then you got the Mavs, Kings, Suns, Pelicans. Spurs clips, if the playoffs started today, would not be in there. Uh, I think we can all agree that they will make their way into the top eight. I'm with you. Thunder are very interesting. They're going to be there too. Thunder are interesting. Can they stay afloat without their guys? But I want to go to the bottom. And I'm not talking about the Lakers because we've had our fair share of fun with the Lakers this season. The Nuggets, equally as disappointing at 1-6. We saw them get absolutely shellacked by the Blazers in Denver last night and everyone now is going what is going on with this team and I'll admit that I was wrong I thought this team might be able to make a little bit of noise and scare some teams they do have some talent talent. but they are struggling and they just look so out of it and not just last night all season long but no team is losing by more than the Denver Nuggets other than the Philadelphia 76ers you can argue whether or not they're fielding an NBA team so it's perplexing in that they field all these talented guys, top to bottom. This team is very talented, but only one guy is performing at a good level, and that's Ty Lawson, and then a bunch of guys who aren't even close to their NBA talent level. It's perplexing. This team came into the season with a lot of ifs, and all those ifs have gone, they've just fizzled out. They have just been, every single one of them has been terrible. You mentioned the talented guys on this team. Danilo Gallinari, the guy that everybody fell in love with this summer, and Kenneth Fareed, right. and JaVale McGee, and, and it goes down the list. Even professional guys like Aaron Aflalo aren't performing at the level that they should be performing at. And Brian Shaw has gone spursy with this team, and by that I mean he's not playing guys a lot of minutes. He's just playing everybody. Oh yeah. He's pulling Danilo Gallinari in and out of the lineup. Gallinari has not responded whatsoever. JaVale McGee can't stay on the floor. As I mentioned, Aaron Aflalo professional, could have been an all-star last year, hasn't been performing. Again, 2 through 15, this team has been extremely bad. You said Brian Shaw, yeah, searching for answers with this team and rosters and, and lineups and stuff like that. Do we, do we, get, is, do we put the blame on him? There has because, to be some. If because, they're not showing yeah, up. Lots of it. It looks like you're watching a pickup game because there's just a random collections of guys out there. They're just running around. They kind of don't really have much of a system. It's hard to figure out what they're trying to do because they really don't know what they're trying to yeah. do. We've, and that comes from the coach. Yeah, he's you're indecisive. right. He's indecisive. You know, you mentioned all those guys getting all these minutes. He doesn't seem to have a rotation or a lineup that he's worked on and he wants to focus on that. He seems to be changing almost daily. Here's a former Nuggets coach, George Carl, uh, was asked about this team and about Brian Shaw. He said, one thing I think Brian Shaw is kind of caught up in a little bit as he's playing too many players. I don't think he can play three centers. I don't think he can play that many big guys on the court when your team plays well when it's fast and small. Went on to say he has six big guys and in the game of basketball right now you don't need six big guys. That's coming by way of the Denver Post. It is interesting like Shaw is trying to figure out and I know there's been comments from him himself about I don't know what type of style we should play. Do we play like the old fast nuggets of of old that had some success? Yeah. Or do we slow it down and, and go through big? He says he doesn't have the runners on the wings to play fast, but they also don't really have a slowdown style to play. It's just a collection of guys who are, they duplicate back and forth everywhere. Darrell, Arthur, J.J. Hickson, basically the same guy. Nate Robinson's like a lesser version of Ty Lawson. It's just the same position. It's the same guys everywhere, and there's no way to really figure out a system for him because nothing falls into place. Yeah, he's... Two. To be fair, though, to Brian Shaw, a lot of these guys are coming back from injuries last year. Right. JaVale, Den- Denilo Gallinari, and, of course, Nate Robinson as well. That's a lot of guys to work back into the rotation yeah. straight away. 
But at the same time, there seems to be a big disconnect between the coach and his players right now. Exactly. They just don't seem to be performing anywhere near their capabilities, yeah. whether they're injured or not. You shouldn't be losing games by 10 points, night in and night out, especially when teams come in on a second night of back-to-back -back yeah. into Denver. Yeah. They've lost both those games where teams have come in on a second night of back-to-back. -back. And you saw Brian Shaw's words. Were, you know, you mentioned them, Skeets. He doesn't seem confident. How can his team mm -hmm. right. seem confident in him? And, and again, losing by 10 points or more, I mean, no NBA team should do that. And again, night only, in, the, out, yeah, sure. only the Sixers are losing worse. I, I think this, this is going to have some ramifications around the league as well because you think that some of these guys will be on the trading block. Yeah, you would think so. Yeah. I, I mean, there's just too many guys. It's not working. A guy like Wilson Chandler could fit with the Los Angeles Clippers, it feels like. They're sure. looking for a small forward. He doesn't make a ton of money. I know the Clippers don't have a lot of assets but it would make a hell of a lot of sense, a guy who's great on the defensive end, to play with those Clippers. And what about Kenneth Fareed? I mean, he's sort of lost in, yeah. in the mix here after signing a, a really nice extension there with this squad. His numbers, they've fallen off too. They have. He and Brian Shaw didn't really get along last season. That's right. And it certainly seems as though that's uh, carried over to this season. Last night he was benched in the second half. Kenneth Fareed had such a fantastic tournament for Team USA, but that has not carried over into the regular season. And yeah, they're down, you know, 84 to 50 at half. The home crowd, rightfully so, booing them. And they didn't even come out of that locker room until there was about a minute and a half before the start of the second half. Very weird. Only J.J. Hickson apparently even got a shot up to warm up. They just went right into it. You know, they made it a little closer. It was a scrimmage by that point yeah. there in the <laughs> second half. But yeah, something's got to change, you would think, soon. Because in that West, when you're 1-6, one 1-7, and six, one and seven, I mean, you're almost out of it already. As crazy yeah. as that yeah. sounds, it's just that much talent there in the West. But let's talk about the Blazers a little bit here um, because I think they're surprising some people because some thought, you know, after that amazing season last year, the 54 wins, they would, they would regress a little bit. So far, so good. Six and three, and of course, hammering some teams. And last night, even without Batum. It certainly helped that Damian Lillard has picked up his game. He started off very, very slowly. The last few games, he shot the ball so much better. And you can just see the way that when he has the ball, he feels confident. He looks like the ball's going in as soon as he releases it. Those first couple of games, he didn't know what was happening there. I think he got his legs back. He did. He definitely did. Batum, as I said, watching from home, cheering on uh, Rip City there. We remember the Blazers last year. They had that super hot start. They were something like you know, 13 and three, I remember, yeah. at, the, at the end of November. Started after nine games, seven and two, you know, six and three this year. But the thing that jumps out at you, they're defensively getting better. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And because we knew they were going to be great offensively, you got you can go through Aldridge. You of course have another All Star in Lillard. They've gotten better on the defensive end of the ball, which is scary for a lot of teams. Yeah, I didn't really get why people were questioning whether or not they would be good this season because you've got a rock in LaMarcus Aldridge. You've got Damian Lillard entering his third year. You've got even more dependable rocks in Robin Lopez and Wesley Matthews, who's expanding his game a little bit. Love that in-between game that he's getting yeah. to. And he's, they've got a little bit of a bit better bench. Uh, which they didn't have yep. last year. So their offense was going to be good. There's just too many stories to talk about in the West, it feels like, yep. to get down to the Blazers. You know, the Spurs struggling, the Clippers struggling, the Sacramento Kings coming out of nowhere. So the Blazers just kind of fall behind. But a 6-3 and three record is not too surprising. Yeah, I think I wasn't too sorry, surprised to think that they would maybe, to maybe fall off because their starting lineup just played so great together last year, but they're still playing great together this year. They play together all the time, and that's why it's okay if their bench isn't great night in and night out, though. Chris Kamen's been all right. You know, yeah. I thought they would fall off a little bit because they, were, they started the season on fire. They couldn't miss threes. Their mm -hmm. offense was carrying them. Their defense wasn't that great. You're right. I think Kamen and Blake have been a great additions mm -hmm. to the bench. But after the All-Star break, it was, you yeah. know, it was like a 500 squad. And I mm -hmm. thought maybe people, not that people thought they were going to be a 500 team. No, better but, than that. But again, they've really impressed me defensively. That's the huge thing. Yeah. Because that's going to win you, you know, when your shot's not falling on any given night, you, you got to rely on your defense. Steve Blake getting into tussles with Ken. Oh, yeah. Reed. They look good. Tussle. They look good. All right. That's why Kobe loved them. When we return, we'll uh, turn our attention from the West. We'll go East. Can Lance Stevenson and the Hornets get it together? They're struggling right now. Back into it with the starters. Welcome back to the starters. We looked at the Western Conference standings as of today. Let's take a look at the East. I think it's a little more like we thought mm -hmm. where it would be at this point, at least in terms of like the teams in the playoffs if they did start today. The Bucks, obviously a surprise, but your Cavs, Hawks, Nets, Heat, Bulls, Wizards, Raps, you know, a lot of us. Raptors top of the East, as had we them. all thought. Yeah, as we all <laughs> thought. Raptors, Bulls tonight on TNT. <laughs> Can't wait for that. Um, but then you look at the disappointing teams, and I think there are, you know, three glaring ones. The Pistons, yeah. they've been confusing the last couple of years, but with Stan Van in there, it's a bit of uh, perplexing. 
the Knicks at two and seven, mm -hmm. and then I think you could throw in the Hornets right at three and five. But between those three, which one is the most disappointing? Uh, to me, it's definitely got to be the Hornets. If it weren't for Lance Stevenson banking in a three and Ken Kemba Walker on their first game of the season, saving him with two different buzzer beaters, they'd right. be one and seven right now. It was kind of a hard situation for them to come into this year because after last season, everybody was fired up. They got the new rebrand. Yep. They're not catching anybody by surprise this year. They lost Josh McRoberts, and that has definitely hurt them. And Lance, for as good as he is and as much of an addition as he really is, he can hurt your team too. There are concerns with him stealing uh, Al Jefferson's rebounds. He's down from 10.8 last year to 6.8 now. It's just a weird scenario because uh, Lance helps a lot, but he also doesn't help where they need it, which is shooting. They need somebody to shoot the ball. Were expectations too high for this team? Did we go overboard? They were 43 oh, yeah. and 39, just above 500 last year. Then you add Lance, and you're right, you got the whole reboot there with the Hornets uh, look. Did we just think they were gonna- excited about them. Yeah. It, it is fun to be excited about them, or was, but like- I don't you think know, they were unrealistic though. I don't, I don't think there were expectations that they could win 45 to 50 in that range okay. of games, and they still could. Of I course. Mean, once they get it together, and once they figure out what they're doing with Lance, but, yeah, you know, Steve Clifford of Coach got, of the Year, right? I do have him for Coach of the Year, too, because now they do have a target on their back, like Trey mentioned. They're going to surprise anyone this year. Teams know they're a good defensive team, and they've got Big Al Jefferson on the post who can score. Kemba Walker, he was fantastic last season. They're just still trying to figure out the best way to incorporate Lance, because we know Lance is a bit sort of hit and miss. We don't know what you're going to get. You think they're three and five just because of Lance? No, I know no, he shot the ball no, poorly. No, but... Not at all, not at all. I, mean, I think they, it's a big part of it. Do? I, I do. I mean, their defense is getting them by just like last Last year, but their yep. offense hasn't been good. And Lance Stevenson, for as talented as he is, I want him to be an all-star last year, he's never been part of a good offense. That offense in Indiana was poor. And you watch him, he hangs onto the ball way too long. That's what he does, that's who he is. You know, even when he's open, he's shooting 19% from three-point land, so he's kind of hesitant to shoot the ball. Mm -hmm. And the ball just sticks. Mm -hmm. and, and, and him and Kemba Walker are similar type players. Also likes to dribble. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I think Lance is just a little too hesitant at this point. No, and I think that is because he doesn't want to come in and look like he's trying right. to, to take away from what they built up last yeah. season. He's trying to fit in, and they're trying to fit him in. And so far through eight games, it just hasn't really been a clicked. weird fit. A yeah. big reason for his decline, though, too, and just in terms of points per game, he was like 64, 65% last season finishing at the rim. Yeah. He was really good at that in terms of guards. He's under five, 50% yeah. this year. I mean, I'd expect that to go up. Yeah, I, so I, that's I. a weird thing, just to suddenly lose your touch yeah. around the net there like that. But slow start for them. What about a team maybe that, I don't know how to word it, but maybe like an under-the-radar team in the East? Does anyone jump out at you, surprised almost, maybe with their record as of today? Well, well, we looked at the top of the East, and the Raps are there at 7-1, and one, and the Wiz have joined them at 6-2. and two. Uh, Without a real uh, exciting or important win, I mean, yeah. they, they just haven't beaten very good teams whatsoever at all. I mean, they've gotten out to their best franchise start since 1975. Great for them, but it's all John Wall uh, to me. And, and there's no Bradley Beal beside him. Paul Pierce is shooting at a terrible, terrible mark for him. It would be his career low numbers. Uh, but I think you can look forward to the rest of the season because John Wall is just so relaxed back there. I love the way he's playing, setting everybody up, and he's so important to them. You know, head coach Randy Whitman, Tuesday night, uh, Wednesday night, I should say, against the Pistons, had him guarding Contavious Caldwell Pope mm -hmm. off the ball a little bit because he's so important on the offensive end and he's doing a great job of it. I think they've got to be extremely pumped to have it. It is, a, it is weird. They haven't played a lot of great teams. They lost to the Raptors and they lost to the Heat, so mm -hmm. two of the better teams in the East. Yeah. Then they took care of a lot of the other teams. I, I'm excited for Bradley Beal, though, to get back in the yeah. mix with oh, this yeah. team. I know it's going to be a little while still, but they're, and this is sort of what I like about them, actually. They're playing to their strengths right now. Mm -hmm. They don't have a ton of shooters, so they're not shooting tons of threes right now. Yeah. Near, yeah. The, you know, near, near the end of the, the league in terms of attempts and makes and stuff like that. Beal's gonna come in there. You know, you're adding five, six three-point yep. attempts a game, and yeah. probably Martell three Webster too. It's definitely gonna yeah. help, just because John Wall is so good at getting guys open threes. Yeah, Martell uh, Webster was big for that team last yeah. year, and, and he hasn't played a single minute. Yet. A, a very weird though. You're right, six and two. But yeah, it is. They're of course happy with those W's. Gotta take a break. Lots more still to come. We're gonna get to the Woe Boy Fantasy Lines of the Night. We're gonna play a new game it's called NBA Rebus. Rebus. Yeah. I'll get the pretzels. Sounds good. Welcome back to the starters. Time for a little NBA game here on the show called NBA Rebus. And I'm gonna let 
Trey Kirby here to my right explain how this bad boy works. Well, a rebus puzzle, as you know, is when you're looking in the newspaper and you see a combination of word or letters and pictures to figure out a word. Okay. You might have gotten it in a fourth grade worksheet or something like that yep. as well. So okay. I'm going to give you some uh, random pictures to find NBA player names. You'll get it once you see it pop up on the big screen. We'll throw it here, and you guys let me know. Here's an example. OJ Mayo. Or OJ Mayo. Mayo. Orange juice and mayonnaise, you got OJ Mayo. OK. OJ hey, yogurt. Looking I great. hope they're that easy. <laughs> well, some of them are, some of them aren't. Moving on, though, our very first one, NBA Rebus. Who Ooh. is this? These uh, brackets here separate. Oh, Ty, Ty Lawson. Lawson. Uh, yeah. Ty Lawson. Oh, that was a Bingo. Ty Lawson, Skeets. We got it at the same time. <laughs> it was a Ty Lawson. Gonna <laughs> get that pun in there. Yes. Another good one, your friend John, John Simmons. No, very oh. close. You got John Stewart and a uh, Rapala Minow, one of the finest <laughs> things you can what? cast. Oh, John Lure. There you go. Oh, yeah, John Lure. Yeah. Is he still with the Bucks? No, he's, oh, he's the on the Grizzlies. Yeah. It's okay. He's trying to hold down that spot. This is a good one. You got uh, a dog to your left, and let me tell you, this is a Spanish-speaking dog. Oh, and then on your right, Pharaoh Antich. Oh. There oh, you go. Good. An Very ant good. and a man itching his back. Oh, Very it? scary, Pharaoh. He was an all-star. I don't remember him as an all-star. <laughs> this one's pretty quick. Just a quick. Matt Barnes. Matt Barnes. Oh. That's right. Okay. <laughs> and yeah. two oh, you guys are it. <laughs> Things get a little more complicated here. Okay. Two names, as, of course, on your left. You have Andrew Wiggins. Nice. No way. No nice way. one. Oh. You guys are Good geniuses. No way I can't believe away. how smart you guys are sometimes. <laughs> Here's another one that might be a little confusing. A man laying bricks, <laughs> a fruit, and Lee Ellis. Um, uh, Plumley. Plum, um, yeah? <laughs> I mean, you're Mason right. Plumley. Yeah. <laughs> nice job. I hope there's a Miles Plumley. This, this one is probably my favorite coming up. Ray Romano, John Cusack, Ron Swanson, and some money. Whoa. Uh, Four syllables, two four. names. Say those names again. <laughs> Ray Romano. <laughs> yeah. John Cusack. Ron Ray John Swanson. Rondo. Uh, yeah, yeah wow. buddy. Oh, Good oh, pull. Oh, Not a lot of people call it cash dough these days, but you can. <laughs> On I your do. left, uh, things for hanging. Kelvin Mack. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey Mack. This is right in Tass's wheelhouse. <laughs> this is, this this is game. Tass's game. This is a good one, pretty straight. Channing Fry. <laughs> yeah, Fry is up. Show me one. This one a little tougher. Uh, suggested by Maddie. Uh, you've got Michael Vick. You've got some ripped jeans. You've got a woman saying Mike hello. Mike <laughs> No. You you've got a woman <laughs> saying hello. You have. A deep end of the pool, and you had the big O, Oscar Robertson. There's a lot happening. So here. you got Michael Vick, you got some ripped G. Oladipo. Victor Go on. Oladipo. Victor, Victor Oladipo. Wow. Oh. wow. And our final one. All right. Uh. Pretty quick, I would have to imagine. A D and Andre Iguodala. The Andre Jordan. The Andre <laughs> the Jordan. Jordan sign. All right. Good job. That was Good a stuff. Blast, NBA right? Rebus. Hope NBA you were, Rebus. I hope you were that playing along yeah. at home. And, uh, if you were listening to the podcast, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> that's not going to work. Cut that up, please. Let's unleash the unicorn. Let's do it. Time for the starters. Fantasy Minute. Little bite. Little bite. Little bite. We're looking at the fantasy lines of the night because there were so many games on. Rondo flirted with another triple-double. Anthony Davis did Anthony Davis things. But our top three well boys, Ty Lawson, in that terrible, terrible loss there to the Blazers, had 32 points. He hit four threes, six assists, three rebounds, two steals. Shot 11 to 17. One of the rare right spots there for the Nuggets. Hey, they uh, scored 113 uh, points. It doesn't matter in did. fantasy. It doesn't matter in fantasy. Who cares about the W or the L's? Number two, Will Boy, Brandon Jennings. Had a nice battle with John Wall, actually, in that Wizards Pistons game. Sure did. 32 points, hit three threes, 10 assists, three rebounds, two steals. He did that all in 34 minutes. Jennings can just have those games yeah, where he catches and I, fire. Yeah. He's very oh, streaky, man. very streaky player. But the number one, Will Boy, goes to Paul Millsap. Is it one L or two? Who cares? Uh, 30 points, four threes, 17 rebounds, what three assists, two steals, two blocks, and one time at least brought Lee Ellis out of his seat. <laughs> right now. Down oh, at the oh, fortress. Oh. Lee screamed like a girl on that time. <laughs> Is that you the first time you've seen a uh, wall boy in person? It might be the first <laughs> wow, time. You're right. Wow. You're right. Uh, <laughs> within, within the fantasy minute here, uh, we got a great tweet here about fantasy basketball from Chicago Bulls 912. He wrote, on fantasy basketball, I tricked someone by giving them Seth Curry for Lance Stevenson. They thought it was Steph Curry. <laughs> that is a jerk move. Yeah, you are a Pretty huge smooth. Jerk. Oh, man. I mean, I don't know who the commissioner of this league is, but you got to rescind that. Probably yeah, that guy. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Like, it's a fair trade. What? You said yes. All right. Fantasy Minute. In the books. Got to take one more break. But when we return, the NBA Easter egg hunt is on. <laughs> we called it. They're having some fun with the wrong spellings of the jerseys. So I'm back, the starters meme team, next.
Welcome back to the Starters. Every Thursday, we like to bring you guys the meme team, which is a few of our favorite weird and wacky moments from the past seven days in the league. So here we go. This week's starting five with the meme team. Number five, Nick Scard, Iman Shumpert. Now it's pronounced Iman, but hey, Iman, what's up? What are you doing here? <laughs> off Amare's face. Don't like that. And then oh. right off Cephalosha below the belt. Oh. That's not right. It's oh. like the five second call, man. Why are you throwing off body parts oh. like that? Oh. Same game. Right there. Same Just game. sniping. That is not cool. At number four, after a Bledsoe pass goes into the uh, Nets bench. Watch the hot potato here. Who wants it? No. You want it? No. Pass it on. <laughs> Are you taking it? No. You want it? No one wants it. Yeah. No, I'll take it. No. Okay. 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 You want? It? No, you take it. Okay, you take it. Okay, you take it. <laughs> do you do you enjoy watching vines? Because that's what you just did. <laughs> At number three, off the court, retired Rockets great Yao Ming. He's having a little trouble getting into this vehicle. Seven six Yao. All right, let's get the seat back. No, uh, it's not working. Uh, don't spill that frappuccino. Can I get in this way? Do you find something comical about my appearance while I'm a passenger in my automobile? Who sent this car? Who sent this car? Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. He got Send into the back car. seat. He, he got to where down. he was going quite uncomfortable. <laughs> wow, that took a while. Number two. Two jersey fails in one week. Andre Drummond, no, you don't spell it like that. And Paul Millsap, last night, they forgot an extra L. At number one, this Blazers fan with a pretty sad <laughs> chance. Oh, no, that's that's just bad. That's the bit. Short. It's a nice outlet. That half-court <laughs> shot did not work out too well. When we show you a bad half-court shot, we always have to show you this, apparently. <laughs> oh, Flashback to oh, Las man. Vegas Summer League. Right! I mean, there was Hold a lot of things. Through, Hold that follow through, Tassie. Hold that follow through. I held my follow through after missing five feet. Right? I hadn't picked up a ball in weeks. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Here Las we go. Vegas Summer League founder Warren Legary had just yelled at me uh, for putting away my credentials. Yeah. He threw me off. That wasn't very nice. So Warren's a great guy, though. All right. There's a look at last night's uh, results in the pick and payoff. Three and two. We split it. We have the same teams. I'm still up two games. Tonight's picks, only four games to pick from. We agree on three of them. The Grizz, Mavs, and Warriors. And Tass once again <laughs> refuses to back the Raptors. I'll nice. take Toronto at home. You're going to take the Bulls. And I can't wait for this because it, of course, is the first game of the TNT doubleheader. It was hard. It was hard to pick against the Raps. And the second one, Nets and Warriors. Should be a great night of basketball. I need but, to make one up. I knew you were taking Toronto. Yeah, that's true. That's mm -hmm. true. And uh, let's get to Lee's very solid play of the night. Lee, what do you got for us? Going down to Miami now. Look at Chris Bosh here at the elbow work. The beautiful three-man weave with Sean Williams, Norris Cole, and Chris Bosh. And then uh, Norris Cole finishes the layup. That's a good that's play, beautiful Lee. beautiful basketball. Finishes with a bounce pass and a layup. And that's what I call nice. a very solid play. We need more give and goes. That yeah. was a solid. good one. We, that uh, was very solid. We saw the uh, Sixers-Mavs game there in our pick and payoff. Michael Carter-Williams, last year's Rookie of the Year, scheduled to play. Can't wait. Thank you for joining us today, folks. And remember, a cereal sandwich in a bowl, a.k.a. layering cereals, is fun and delicious. Race the night, people.